sweetie, it's mom here. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that your room is all set up and ready for you. We can't wait to have you back here with us. So, yeah, uh, call me when you can. Love you. Testing. One, two. Check. Hello, and welcome to the Black Ponder. My name is Neil Trotter, and I am checking the levels. <laughs> um, this is the mixer levels. Looks good, but we'll see. Hello. Uh, oh, I see uh, Nadia. Made it today. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right, yep, there we go. <laughs> okay, Black Ponder, hello. Um, Black Ponder is a uh, philosophy YouTube channel, and we talk about philosophical texts, um, you know, and sometimes we do the streams. Um, you know, streams, we just talk about philosophy. Well, not sometimes. Well, we always talk about philosophy. And then we talk about, like, topics, um, the philosophy behind topics, <laughs> I should say. Um, yeah, and that's been going cool. Um, uh, today's topic is marriage. So it's actually a, um, a viewer requested topic. So that'll be cool. 
a vehicle requested by somebody in the chat right now. <laughs> so that's cool. And yeah, so we got to talk about marriage. Um, actually, let me see what I wrote here for my YouTube description. Uh, let's see, just so I can give a context as to... Okay, okay, let's see. Oh, wait a minute, that's not it. That's not it at all. Uh, let's see. YouTube Studio. Content. Live. Edit. Okay. Let's talk about philosophy. So, today's topic... What really is marriage? What is marriage? <laughs> is it an advanced mode of love or social, socio-economic, or a socio-economic construct? Construct. So, is it like? <laughs> it, does it really have anything to do with love, or is it just a construct? <laughs> We've social construct. Uh, so, is it a mature stage in a romantic relationship? That's what, you know, we've been told. That's what we've been conditioned as. And, you know, maybe that's what it is. Or is it an institutional tool of state power? Mm -hmm. Is that what marriage is? Is marriage a genuine state of love or just a cruel farce? <laughs> is marriage timeless or is it absolute, obsolete? So, like, is it, it just, uh, is marriage just an archaic, um, con you know, thing that we do based off of, like, old traditions or or is it, and maybe we should decide you know what <laughs> this whole marriage thing like just like you know certain other things we've done in history that we just don't do anymore maybe marriage should be one of those things that we should just not do anymore <laughs> but uh let, but let's discuss let's discuss let me see here okay okay cool yeah uh and so uh, I'm married. <laughs> so, uh, I'm married. So you know, as we as we do, um, I will uh, t begin with the uh, with the antidote an antidotes or like uh, personal experiences for myself. That's a great way to start, and then kind of talk about how I feel about my experience, and then from there, uh, you know, we can open it up to some up other people want to talk. Of course, if you got questions, if you're watching, you can always ask questions. Or if you're watching later, and this has already been pre-recorded, and you just <laughs> clicked on the post, you can comment in the, in the chat, and that's cool too. We can continue the discussion there as well. And you know, this isn't like you know the Black Ponder laid-back lo-fi channel. Don't got the the greatest um, you know technology, and don't got the uh, most formal structure <laughs> so lo-fi in every sense of the word so you know we are it's more free form when this isn't like a lecture or some sort of sermon right we just we just hanging out we're chilling hence the thumbnails they're more like pretend we're at the lounge or the cafe or like the night bar or something <laughs> we're just shooting the breeze but you know we're interjected to philosophy so feel free to discuss and you can always talk say what you want and you know, I don't. You could go off topic. That's fine too. But I always veer it back to the topic. Um, <laughs> uh, so you know, just say what you feel. So uh, marriage. So yeah, I, I'm I'm personally married to. I have a wife. <laughs> um, been uh, married since uh, 2019. Right before the pandemic. <laughs> right before we got at a wedding, small wedding. Um, it was it was just not even like a, a formal thing. Uh, I'm I I live in um, uh, Memphis, Tennessee. You know, the Yeehaw. Although you know, I guess it's not Yeehaw. It's not cowboys. You know, I mean, we kind we kind of do have cowboys, here, but it's not like Texas where it's like cowboy central. No, it's a, you know, it's the South. So, but Mississippi is next. I know. Um, Memphis is next to the Mississippi River, right? Uh, the big ass river that goes across the United States. 
of America and um, they do cruises they do some uh, cruises the Mississippi River is like it's not it's big enough for like a, a, a cruise ship but it's like a small cruise ship right it's not the most impressive river in the world <laughs> so we were like hey let's just get married on we just um, pay tickets and you could just pay a ticket to get on a cruise and they do like nice um, you know they got live music and food you just pay for the ticket and you that's cool <laughs> we were like hey well instead of like paying like three four five thousand dollars for a formal wedding we'll just like buy tickets to, to this cruise thing that just it's like a few three or four hours and we'll just like we got we had a friend who's uh, we have a friend who does who's able to um offic officiate weddings <laughs> i forgot i think yeah i don't know how she you know you can do that you don't have to be a a, a pastor or pre preacher you could there's other ways you can be officially uh ordained marriage person <laughs> so we have a friend that did that it's so, all you know it was just me uh, another friend who has to be the witness <laughs> and um uh yeah the, or, our friend who um officiated the wedding and then uh, my wife it was just four of us four <laughs> now is it and we got married it was nice it was pretty cool now um and i was like uh, a, m a few months right before the pandemic hit <laughs> so so what happened is it, a lot of people if you like maybe paid attention or like looked at the news and such a lot of people a lot of relationships got went way sour during the pandemic because people had to live in close proximity with each other couldn't <laughs> there wasn't opportunities for people when they got like into like a little of uh, social uh, when they started you know getting because you know you're with somebody for a long period of time <laughs> um, you know it's, you tend to like realize okay I you know there's some annoying things that I got or there's things I gotta adjust with some people didn't have that leeway so a lot of relationships kind of crumbled under like that lockdown but mine's didn't fortunately uh, we just worked it out fortunately we were like two very realistic people we're like you know what we're starting to find each other's quirks, but it's fine. <laughs> we're, we're humans, and we could coexist, and we still love each other, and we don't have to agree on everything and all that. So we worked. It was cool. It was nice. And then um, you, I got um, a message that said, did your family want to be at your wedding? Um, it would have been, uh, pro I mean, they probably would have liked it, but they wasn't really tripping <laughs> my so my family most of my family lives in another state <laughs> right? uh, I live in I currently live in Tennessee and most of my family lives in California a lot of like my mama and my um, brothers and such so um, they were not tripping <laughs> about moving to Tennessee and then having to deal with all the logistical work i mean it's a lot of work right so you can already tell by my tone and by my family's tone we're like not the biggest oh, we don't care too much about like the ceremony of marriage i mean so a lot of several members of my family really you know they like that whole pomp and circumstance but a lot of us are like eh you know i know but it's all you could tell right uh uh, we're not like the biggest people when it comes to um, having a big ornate over the top traditional marriage so they didn't feel that bad <laughs> they didn't feel that bad. I just told them like hey I got married or I'm getting married right? they're like oh that's great you know uh, get send us pictures <laughs> you know? uh, that's how they were so it was all good um, uh, and so I guess that's kind of a a hint or like a, a teaser to to express my I, my opinion about marriage <laughs> right um, yeah and, and so we was me and my wife i was with her uh, for years okay so let's go back even further back in the, back in the way day right um before i even met <laughs> my wife uh, my current wife and uh, I was single living a single life and I guess I'll tell you a little bit of um, 
uh, personal history, which is fine. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Personal. I I lived. I was one of those people who was like, man, I'm never getting married. <laughs> like, why get married? I I always felt like, why would anybody in their right mind decide to get married? <laughs> What's the? You're, you're locked into one person, and it seems like a lot of work. And also, most people get divorced. Right? <laughs> I, I you know. Um, a lot of people get divorced. I know, and I'm pretty sure in the United States of America, the statistic is like 50% of people who get married get divorced. And in other states, I mean, in other countries like Britain and Japan, like it's way higher. <laughs> so it's like, what's the point? So, you know, throughout my 20s, I, I basically, and, and honestly, like I also was not, I was never really in a serious committed relationship. Uh, I'll be honest and say my, um, my current uh the marriage i'm in has only been this is my first and only marriage for me um b before then i didn't i wasn't in serious relationships i had a lot of like i guess you call them friends with benefits <laughs> and i was like hey that's uh cool with me i, I like that life <laughs> um you know no strings attached type of relationships i, I was that guy but you know i wasn't you know like cheating on people it was all everything was consensual i was like there's people you know you know that kind of lifestyle which is not like you know i wasn't like a playboy or anything like that you know? but i was the type of guy it's like hey you know i'm not really into the whole serious committed relationship type of thing i'm kind of like a I like to have my free time, and um, I like the single life. And but you know, I do like the ladies. So, you know, if friends want to be, hey, you want to like do something? like I'll, I'm open to that. But you know, and there's a lot of people who are like that. Right? And, but you know, eventually, what happens for many people is they start feeling um, like you know, I, I really feel like I need to you know be in a committed relationship. You know, there's something in, that's missing. You know, I need to find my soulmate. And a lot of people start getting, they live that single life and they're like, well, eventually I want to find that one person I can spend the rest of my life with. And for me personally, like, that never happened. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, you watch the Lifetime movies and the Hallmark Channel movies and you feel like, you know, they condition you to think like this. They condition you to think like well, inevitably, you're going to find your soulmate or you're going to find that one person you want to, and, you know, the whole, like, living single is, uh, that's just something you, immature people do, and, uh, you know, you don't, you don't really live a full life until you fall in love with that one person. Um, so I think a lot of when people feel that way, it's more conditioning. Um, some people, you know, they do have that genuine feeling, and that's that's cool. But I think sometimes society kind of tricks us into thinking that way. Where for me, it was like, yeah, that, I just, I never felt guilty or like I'm missing out. Or you know, I would see couples um, before I got married. I'd see couples. I'd be like, wow, I feel sorry for them. <laughs> but you know, they look happy. But you know, I like my, um, I like my my life. <laughs> my single life and hello uh, Jeremy born now uh, but eventually like I, I met my uh, current um, wife uh, and we just started dating and it was the same situation right? I just we had a very long um, on and off <laughs> kind of like casual relationship which is you know same thing was going on <laughs> you know and um uh, so yeah, that, that was the thing that happened. Now, uh, eventually, I found out that um, uh, she had a, she was she also dated she had a boyfriend. She had a boyfriend, um, and uh, I was like, oh, <laughs> whoops! I, I didn't realize you have a boyfriend. Uh, at first, I was like, oh, you're you're dating something else. That's cool. I'm like, i that's all good with me. Like, um, you know, I also date other people too you know it's if you're you know that there ain't nothing wrong with that i date we could be like uh casually dating but she did that's how i found out like no this is actually my boyfriend and i'm like oh okay i guess i should back off that i didn't realize you were in a committed relationship with somebody else <laughs> while uh i was dating you right 
And then she said, "Oh, you know, I, I'm actually I'm polyamorous. I'm polyamorous." Right. <laughs> and I'm like, "What? What? Polyamorous? This is like I'm in my 20s, and <laughs> so I'm I'm pretty naive at this time, <laughs> you know. Uh, or I'm not lit, you know. I'm um, my education on these things is very limited." <laughs> And I'm like polyamorous. What's polyamory? I don't. What is that? Poly. I, I know polygamy. Isn't that what Mormons do? Like in Utah, like the you know the guy has multiple wives. Like I know that. Right? You, you say you're po polygamous, and then you know she, she broke it up. She broke down. Like no, no poly polyamory is when you have multiple relationships, um, multiple serious committed relationships. Right? And I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's. That's kind of weird, <laughs> but I mean, that's not, you know, it wasn't weird. It was just like, I just never thought about that. You know, of course, maybe I, I've probably seen like movies where people do that. But I was like, you know, I actually never really delved into that. Um, so, you know, and she was like, I, I would like to continue going out with you, but you got to understand, like, I'm polyamorous. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Um, and then we just kept it casual <laughs> for a while because I wasn't, I wasn't ready. I was like, eh, I'm not really into. I'm not ready to be in a committed relationship. I like the, the casual thing. And uh, and then we were kind of on and off. Sometimes we just stop, um, uh, you know, seeing each other for a while. And then we were kind of like that for years, basically. And then. Jeremy Borno says, in, in my opinion, dating multiple people should be normal because our grandparents have done it, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I don't know if my grandparents did that, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Maybe yours, but, you know, I don't think my my grandparents didn't date multiple people. <laughs> I don't think. I mean, they, they've had several monogamous relationships. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the more we date before marriage the more we know and understand what we want from partners yeah that's true that's true some people hate dating though i'll tell you that like i know a lot of people it's like i can't stand dating it's so it's just such a chore um, i just want to find that one person i love i used i love dating <laughs> so i think it's a pretty fun but maybe it's because it, particularly back in those days i wasn't like trying to find a, a partner <laughs> i was just trying to just have fun uh, uh, so maybe that's why i liked it so much dating should be fun and adventurous experience without commitment uh, i mean that's how i did it <laughs> but you know not <laughs> some people like when they date they're like look i'm trying to find that one like that's the that's the end goal like they're not trying to be in a casual situation <laughs> I, I met those people and then you know and i was too i was not ready like i i would date some women who were like yeah i, I i'm trying to like be with i'm trying to f uh, be with the person i'm eventually going to marry and i'm like whoa you know or even further like i'm trying to find the father of my children i'm like whoa 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 <laughs> i'm sorry i apologize maybe i'm not the right person for you <laughs> but this is back in the day i'm just trying to try to have a good time and then of course you're like well you know that's immature and they're like okay well that's fine you feel that way and then they say, okay okay yep and then there's some conversation going on that's fine uh, yeah, so eventually, like, um, what happened is my, um, uh, you know, the, my, the person I'm currently married to, she, uh, we stopped kind of dating, and then I moved from California to Tennessee, and then she actually, dad bought, like, an RV and did, like, a road trip, and went all the way up to Canada from the United States, and just drove across country and all that. <laughs> But eventually, like, she uh, stopped doing that. And well, while she was doing that, we kind of had, like, um, uh, phone conversations. You know, just casual phone conversations. Um, and we kept in touch. So that was cool. And eventually, she kind of stopped wanting to do that. And uh, and I was like, hey, you know, if you, if you don't know where to go, you just come over 
come uh, over where I'm at, <laughs> you know, because I'm just uh, living here by myself, chilling. Uh, come on, you know, come live with me. And she's like, okay, yeah, I think I'll do that. <laughs> and so she came over, um, and we just started really like dating again, right? And um, at th it's still at this time, I was like, oh, you know, that's what I started developing. Like, you know what? This might be a, a partner, <laughs> a partner, right? This might be like the person, like I maybe I should, you know, she was really, I really like her a lot. You know, I was like, hey, you know, I liked her more than other people I dated. And I'm like, you know, maybe I should just cut this out, this whole, um, maybe I should just kind of be committed, right? Or kind of explore the relationships in a deeper way with this person, because I really like this person. And, uh, and so I did that, uh, but at, the, you know, I also was at the, of the idea like, yeah, but marriage is just, I don't want to get married. Marriage is just like, a, a, you know, a, a patriarchal artifact, <laughs> social, it's just a construct that it's just literally the state telling you they're, they're acknowledging that you are in love with somebody, right? That's how I felt. And honestly, kind of still how I feel, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, marriage is just like the state legitimizing your relationship, which is like, well, fuck the state. <laughs> like, I don't need the state to tell me whether I love somebody. I love somebody regardless. So I was like, why should I get married? And she kind of felt the same way at the, t at the time. She was like, yeah, we don't need to get married. You know, I think. And we're both kind of feminists. <laughs> so we kind of had that whole thing going on is like yeah it's not necessary um uh, so you know that was my that's my in that's currently my opinion of marriage too where did the idea of the one even come from it came from patriarchy right? that's where it came from it came from fucking patriarchy <laughs> smashed the patriarchy no, just, you know. um, but so what happened is um my my wife deals with a lot of health problems she's got a lot of issues she got migraines really bad uh and she has other health problems right and um you know and healthcare to get you know healthcare in the united states of america is prohibitively expensive right it's horrible right but it can be um you know realistic you can kind of realistically pay for for health care if you have a health insurance here um, even when you have health insurance it's actually i mean it's still very expensive but at least it's like at least, at least like it's doable right and i have um, health insurance under my employee employer which is how many people have health insurance i think most people in the united states of america have health insurance because of their work offers some health insurance it's part of the whole package that you just take some money out of your paycheck every every paycheck to to pay for health insurance uh, and i got that and, and it's and you know lots of these health insurance plans you can enroll your spouse into health insurance um and you know my my wife my i guess my girlfriend at the time she was uh uh, you know, really suffering bad from migraines and other health issues. And I was like, you know what? I think we should just, we should get married so that I can enroll you in my health insurance plan. Right? Because you can't do that. <laughs> you have, it, it's all uh, here. This is the, one of the issues, right? Uh, marriage offers you a lot of legal benefits, like adding people to your health insurance plan. You know, if she was just my girlfriend, I wouldn't have been able to do that. But because she's my spouse, I can actually include her in my health insurance. Now she gets the benefits of my health insurance plan. All right? And that was uh, honestly the main reason why I married. We got married because of that. Uh, and then you say, Nadia says, so eager to find out why you ended up getting married considering your views. Yep, that, so that's why. Right. It's because all the legal benefits that you get from getting married, which is kind of fucked up. <laughs> it's like, it's very fucked up, but uh, that's why. 
and that's why a lot of people get married <laughs> you know uh, or like you know why marriage is is still like you know because we like to romanticize marriage we, we have to romanticize we like to romanticize marriage and think it's all oh, it's all about love and it's about romance but a lot of it has to do with all the legal benefits you get from getting married <laughs> and all the state state benefits the state will give you all these perks if you get married right because you're now you're playing the, the state's game which is you know patriarchy right <laughs> you know you uh you know you start playing the state you start following by the state rules then you can you get get all the perks that the state offers but if you're like fuck the state then it's like okay we ain't give you shit fuck you and fuck your health <laughs> you know? You know, so, so yeah as you can see like this is you're, now you start to understand my opinion of marriage and then um, Jeremy Borno says why do you think of the household what do you think of the housewife role I think men could I think men must cook and clean in the household as much as they work. Yeah, the, ho the housewife role is, you know, is is um, is you know, it's not, it's a it's a it's a creation. <laughs> it's not natural. It's just a thing that we've you know society has created to make women put women in the role of subservience. <laughs> right? To, you know, it's just a you know, it's a construct it's a role <laughs> to you know and I, I i i don't go so far as to say like it's stupid right <laughs> which I, I i don't you know i'm not really about that housewife or traditional gender roles but some you know i know people i know women who like being housewives like and if you, if that's what you like then hey more power to you right and it, i mean i know a lot of my i have friends who are like yeah i like to be a stay at home a mom and i like to take care of the house and you know I do like to focus on you know the chores and and I yeah, I do like the idea of the man, um, just being the breadwinner and I'm like okay that's fine, that's cool but that shouldn't be like you shouldn't apply that to like, you know that should be applied to all families. <laughs> so but yeah I'm I'm not cool with the housewife role and yeah men can cook and they can clean I mean I do all that, you know I cook I clean I mean. <laughs> whatever uh, and then you say I think it's discriminatory and horrible that women still fill the homemaker role do they though I, I, I mean it is still a thing yeah that is a thing um, and you know I guess it's there is still that expectation that exists but the expectations kind of waning <laughs> don't you think um, you know but I mean the, sexism still exists and you know women still get um there's still gender pay gap and all this and so it and that gender pay gap has to do with you know the society is encouraging women to just stay at home and, and be that role right and make you know women have a, a harder time um being successful in the workforce right <laughs> the workforce right um because you know they you know they they they're pushed toward home life which is still very much a thing but not so, not as it was in the 50s <laughs> like let's say that right so uh, thank goodness for that and then you say nadia says oh wow in canada we have common law which comes into effect when you live with someone for over one year this gives a lot of similar benefits as marriage okay yeah i think we in the united states we have common law but it's like i think i mean it's a lot longer than one year i think it's like 10 years or something like that like it yeah i, I don't think it's one year um uh, it might be I, i'm not an expert in law i just know like with health insurance like you have to be a spouse with, you have to be married with somebody to um or they need to be like a dependent or something like that but if it, your girlfriend or your boyfriend, no matter how much you live with them, like, uh, yeah, you're not enrolling. They, they can't be enrolled in your health insurance. Uh, 
which is but yeah i guess canada probably is better the united states of america is is horrible when it comes to that kind of shit <laughs> they make no mistake about it uh, many countries are better than that than uh than that for sure i mean yeah our health health care system as everybody knows everybody in the world understand you know knows that health care in, in america is you know it's abysmal <laughs> i mean we have the technology the technology is incredible it's just access to it is like you know um you know just disgusting right? <laughs> so, uh, but we all know this right so yeah yeah, all you say, including sharing employee health insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. At least Canada got that going for it. <laughs> Which is why, you know, lots of people from America, like, I'm moving to Canada. <laughs> but it's funny, they moved to Canada. Like, wow, this place ain't as good as I thought it was. <laughs> but at least they got that. <laughs> at least they got that. I, I, I know people personally. They're like, they're like I, I'm first thing I do, I'm going to move to Canada. And then they come to Canada and they're like, oh, shit, it's actually not as good as I thought it was. But it's a little better. Right? <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, so the other thing, you know, so there's all types of perks you get when you're married in the, in America, right? Um, I know. I remember when I got married, my credit score went up <laughs> for some reason. Uh, my insurance premiums went down, like you know, car insurance, <laughs> renters insurance. <laughs> so all the insurance is like, oh, you're married now, so you're not as your your liability you know um you know you're not as much as a risk <laughs> so well, well you can pay a little less now you know um yeah all, all these like um financial things you know taxes you get more tax uh, benefits when you're married right? you get to file your taxes jointly uh, so then so in that, so in effect you pay less taxes when you're married so, so it's the state incentivizing you financially to get married. <laughs> you get, you all get all these perks. One of the big perks is, you know, I also have a, a daughter, and uh, but I, we, me and my wife adopted our daughter. Now, in my state, Tennessee, <laughs> right, to adopt, um, uh. In our situation, yeah, we had to we had to be married to to adopt. Um, we were you, you, we were not able to adopt if we were not married, <laughs> which is wow, really? That's is that horrible? But yeah, that, that's the rules. That's the rules here. That's the rules. So um, yeah, we had to be married to adopt. Uh, that's another thing, All right? Uh, and, and so, like, my um, daughter also has a lot of health um, issues, and, or she has several health issues that um, she benefits from my health care plan. So I was able to enroll her <laughs> into my health insurance plan, my employer's health insurance plan. Um, and that had to do with me being married, right? So, you know, and, 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 and so... You know, just to give you my two cents about the issue, um, yeah, marriage. I don't really think it's a, a thing that validifies a, a romantic relationship. I just think, um, you know, um, you know, I, I was gonna say marriage is good if you want benefits from the state or like financial benefits, um, but even that's like, it's a damn shame that that is a thing. But it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, but yeah, we could talk a little bit about. Um, um, do you uh, do you feel like marriage? Because there's this whole idea that um, you know mature people get married, right? You know, if you're serious about the person you love, you should get married. If you don't get married, that means you're not serious about the relationship you're in. Now, you know, that kind of language or that kind of con concept. Now, I, you know, personally, as you may have already guessed by the what I've been saying, like, I, I think that kind of logic is bullshit. <laughs> I think, you know, uh, you know, you could be in a, uh, an incredible relationship that's uh, 
meaningful and uh, awesome and you know whether you're married or not who gives a damn right if it weren't for the employer health benefits would you have gotten married um well yeah because we still you know taxes are good <laughs> like you know there's so many there's so many things that you benefit from financially when you get married <laughs> but if you didn't have any of that stuff like if, if there are no state social economic perks for getting married would i have gotten married no right because uh, but because beside all of that stuff marriage to me does it you know it's a farce right? it's a, i hate to be like that but yeah because a lot of people really feel marriage is um um you know it's a re you know they really feel like yes you know the, i'm gonna go to um um every kiss begins with k that that's a, a jewelry store in the in america i don't know if it's in other countries but they got commercial every kiss begins with k that's that that's the song they sing <laughs> every kiss you buy your your red wig and you like you know you you go you um take a you get on one knee and you propose like will you marry me but now before you do that you got to ask the every every gentleman every guy has to ask their father their um uh, their uh, their 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 girlfriend's father's permission to get married <laughs> which is so stupid <laughs> but you know a real man asks uh their girlfriend's father's permission to get married you know that kind of whole role play it's just so stupid <laughs> but um, you know but some people really buy into that but it's patriarchal. Why, you know, I mean, it, so, you know, if you just hyper examine that um, example of asking, it's like, why? So I have to ask another man. <laughs> like, it's so patriarchal. Like, what if the man says no? Like, oh, I guess I can't marry. But what if the daughter was like, yeah, no, I want to get married. Well, the, your father said no, so it's just not going to happen. It's like, as you know because women are property or some bullshit <laughs> it's just stupid it, 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 you know i still see those commercials to this day and i'm like it's 2024 <laughs> it's not like 1724 which in 1724 it was it was you know a, a dumb thing to do <laughs> illogical do you and your wife still see other people i i don't um uh, uh, she's still polyamorous <laughs> so yeah, we could talk about that if you want and i've um discussed this a little bit in um when i did my uh, uh when i talked about the ethical slut that text it was when i um, did this debate online debate on jealousy you know i used the ethical slut at first i you know i did the i talked about the text um, just by myself in my video at the time, I was like, I don't know if my I want if my wife wants her that her business to be out in the internet like that. So I was like trying to, um, you know, uh, not you know say all that because I was like, I don't know if she wants her business out there like that. I for me, it's like I, I don't give a fuck. I'll, I'll say, you know, I mean, I don't really have nothing, anything to hide. I, I you know, the skeletons in my closet are very boring. <laughs> <laughs> it does not don't really have much personal business that's like hyper interesting so <laughs> i'll just say whatever about me but i'm like well you know there's other people in my life I, I probably should respect their privacy but my wife was like oh you can you can say all that it's fine it's, there's nothing wrong with that and she feels like you know it's good to talk about um you know poly polyamory and other types of relationships because it you know it, um what is it? It demystifies it, right? And it uh, gives representation, right? So uh, that's cool. So I was like, okay, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely talk about. It. Yeah. So my wife still sees um, other people uh, from time to time because she's poly that's she's like she's polyamorous now. Uh, yeah. So there's several things to talk about there. Um, 
I guess first I'll just talk about my experience. So it's funny because <laughs> when I was not married, when I was not married, um, I was seeing different people. She was seeing other people. We were seeing each other. And I was like, not bothered at all. <laughs> I was not bothered at all. And then, you know, I was in relationships with people um, who was also in relationships with other people. And I, I, it was all good. The minute I got, when I got married and she was doing, she did the same thing. Not, not surprising. Like she, you know, we knew this from the get go. Right, she would say like, you know, polyamorous. We're gonna stay polyamorous. I'm like, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did it before, like, so no surprises up front. But she still was seeing other people. No difference. But I started feeling weird. <laughs> you know, it, like, it felt weird. It felt weird. Why? Why did it feel? I was like, I don't get it. Like, I think that, and it, I think what happened is the ingraining in the. Uh, the uh you know the program the social programming was so strong within me <laughs> within me right what's you get married you you adopt this whole different conception of like well i'm in a marriage now so this is exclusive you know even though like i don't believe in that at all <laughs> but the the social programming was so strong in me it was happening she was basically doing the exact same thing uh and i started feeling weirded out by it I had to like take a step back like wait what's going on because <laughs> you know, like why you see that guy oh well aren't i good enough i've i didn't say these things but i was i had these thoughts and i'm like what do you mean i might you know i was I had to take a step back i'm like why am i thinking like this of course i'm gonna so you know in a polyamorous relationship right um you know, uh, you seeing, uh, you seeing as uh, when your partner sees somebody else, it has nothing to like. Your partner seeing other else doesn't like. It doesn't, because um, the idea is like you're seeing somebody else because you're not good enough. But but um, in polyamory is like is that's not the case. <laughs> it's like I'm just seeing somebody else because I like this person, but you're just as good. You know, like exclusivity doesn't equal like my love for you like i don't love you any more or less um based on like my exclusiveness to you <laughs> um which is what i i really like about polyamory but it took me a while to kind of like uh, emotionally deprogram myself because <laughs> i guess i've been watching too many lifetime movies or too many hallmark movies right the fair too many disney princess uh fairy tale stuff it really just really uh hardwired my brain right um but of course like uh see see is she still you know i i'm i trust uh i'm pretty confident she's uh loves me <laughs> right and you know she could when she sees other people it's like she's just seeing other people <laughs> like that has nothing to do with um with me uh yeah yeah and, and so you know i like it and, and, and then the other thing that i like is you know i claim to be a feminine you know because you know we just, now this is when it starts getting highly opinionated <laughs> but I, I believe this i believe like exclusivity you know when you really think about it, like when it's like I I I want you and only you, right? Um, you are the one, and you're not allowed. You you do not go to, with other people, right? Where where does that come from? Where does that come from? Like like this exclusivity? It's kind of like is it, it, it's almost like a an equate equating of love with ownership. Which, when you think about it, is pretty sick. <laughs> it's pretty sick. Like your uh, your intimacy, you can only be intimate with me, because your I your intimacy belongs to me, <laughs> right? But you know, for me, it's like I don't I don't I don't own anybody. I don't even I don't own. I certainly don't own the people that I love, <laughs> right? Like uh, you know. And that's how I see it. But uh, let me see some other 
you guys, assuming you live together, does she bring other people home to your house? Um, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. I mean, is she like, um, just to hang out? <laughs> I mean, you know, don't, you know, don't get it. To, like, she's like not making out with these people in our house or, nothing, <laughs> you know, or anything like that. Uh, you know, it's just like, so that's a, definitely um, a conversation you should have if you're with a polyamorous person. And that's like a conversation you should have. Like, okay, I'm going to date other people. Is it, do you, would you feel comfortable with me bringing this person inside our house? Because some people would be like, yeah, no, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And that's fine. That's fine. You know, you may, you might go further and say, well, why don't you feel comfortable with what's the problem? Uh, but, you know, if you feel, and, and so like that, the text, the ethical slut, which I have uh, somewhere around here. Oh, it's probably in my, well. Uh, I thought I could just bust it out, but it looks like I can't. Do I have like a feminism shelf? I don't think I do. Hello. <laughs> I'm uh, live streaming. My wife just walked in. <laughs> you thought you tired? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I thought I could bust out with the ethical slut, but um, I don't know where it's at. <laughs> this is my doggy. Oh, okay, here it is. The topic is marriage. And they're t asking about your polyamory. <laughs> here it is. But the ethical slut talks about like asking... Um, uh, what you're comfortable with, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, things of that nature, like asking, uh, yeah, is it cool to uh, bring this person to the home, or what are your boundaries and things like that? Um, so those are the questions you can ask. But yeah, so that was what was it? So that what was it? Was two things. And then the other thing I was asking, do I see other people? And currently not. Now, so the other thing is like, uh, so sexuality is, uh, I would say, a spectrum. Right? It's a spectrum. <laughs> sexuality is, and, and it's a multi-dimensional spectrum. Right? So I would, you know, I would go far. You know, I would, I would say like, part part of that spectrum is like polyamory and monogamy right one that axis right there's all different types of the axes right there's um you know there's uh what is it uh, ag uh not agnostic a aromantic uh, what a aromantic what asexual asexuality and um I don't know what you would call the other hypersexuality. I don't know because <laughs> you know I, I also have friends who are um, they identify as asexual. Now that that um, uh, there's the variations in that too, right? Some people are like, yeah, I just I have no sexual attraction w whatsoever, and then there's other people, some other as asexual uh, pe folks that I know who are like, well, I'm into romance. <laughs> right and, and so there's various but i'm just not into like um having to, like sexual um interactions but i'm into romance <laughs> uh and i think it's kind of the same thing with polyamory where it's like there are some people who are with who just are into um you know they they, they just who they are is they just are naturally want to be have serious relationships with multiple partners and they're they fit in that spectrum and then there's other people who are like yeah i'm only i'm pretty comfortable with just being with one person and, and so we kind of like our society um you know 
current popular society says, well, you know, everybody is monogamous, <laughs> right? And that's not true, right? But then there's the other part, and we were talking about this with the debate that I have um, uh, with the when we were debating jealous, where the the person uh, Ishmael he was saying like I he was saying like everybody is polyamorous by nature, like most, and and, and that's kind of the school of thought of that too. Like, well, you know, marriage is like unnatural, and most people, and the reason why divorce rates are so high and things because human beings are naturally not they don't want to they're not naturally um suited to just be with one person right <laughs> and that's i don't think that's true either like there are some human beings that aren't they they truly aren't seated with just being one person but then there are some human beings who are right who are it's just sexuality is a spectrum right so some people are naturally uh, inclined to be with multiple partners and some people are just naturally they're most comfortable just being with one person right and when they're put in situations where they're with multiple people they find that uncomfortable right uh, and then there's other people who just like yeah i don't want to be with anybody that's the thing too right? we and that's stuff that we should accept too because some people are like oh aren't you lonely or like you know, that's a shame that you don't want to be with anybody. It's like, well, no, maybe they're just naturally inclined to just be like, hey, I'm, I'm cool by myself. Right? I don't really want to be in a serious ro romantic relationship. Uh, so it's a spectrum. right? I, I think maybe I'm not in the polyamory spectrum. <laughs> like, I, I'm pretty comfortable being with one person. But at the same time, I'm comfortable with, with being some, with somebody now <laughs> who goes out with multiple, who has multiple committed relationships. Um, so I don't really see other people <laughs> other than my wife. And I think, yeah, I'm still exploring my sexuality and spectrum. But I do think there are some many people who are just naturally monogamous. I don't think that is, monogamy is a... a um, a, a social construction i think that is the thing that some people just naturally are i do think like what we have socially constructed is this concept of everybody's supposed to be monogamous right that's a falsehood <laughs> but uh, i don't think everybody is by nature polyamorous right uh, but there are many people who are polyamorous and then i would argue that there are many people who are in monogamous relationships that actually probably are polyamorous right um And then uh, you see some text here. I love the dynamic right now. Yeah, she was uh, pretty tired. She gets tired from work. So I don't think. <laughs> so I'll leave her alone. And then I'm in a monogamous relationship and have only been in monogamous relationships in the past. Hmm. Okay. You're yeah, right, right. They might want you. Uh, as part of the conversation, <laughs> but I think, uh, uh, <laughs> but maybe my uh, my doggy wants to be part of the conversation. <laughs> no. no, you know you don't have to. So yeah, it's all good. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but uh, Nadia says, um, yeah, I've been in mon monogamous relationship and have only been in monogamous relationship in the past definitely open to other people being poly but for myself i feel like it would be kind of exhausting right right um yeah and then that that's another uh ax axis right um we currently understand this as introvert extrovert <laughs> or um some people uh they get energy from being with multiple people like the more people they're with the more energy they get right an extrovert and then there's the other side where it's like the introvert where it's like being with more multiple people drains their energy and being by themselves refuels that energy right yeah and i know both people i know a lot of extroverts i'll tell you that right now i know people who just like 
they they could be with many many people they go to parties they they go clubbing and they just like the, the energy just fuels <laughs> and then when they're by themselves they feel horrible they feel um drained and so i know a lot of people who they the pandemic happened and then we were in lockdown they were just like they were fucked up <laughs> right but then you have um and then i know people who are intro introverts who are like and that the introvertedness um can can contribute or interact with the axes of um the polyamory or the monogamy <laughs> right where it's like you know being with multiple partners that's exhausting because you have to you got to put out so much of your emotional output has to be um you know just uh just output it all that emotion has to be outputted now for some people that that fuels them right it's like the, the more emotion i pull it put out the more you know it gives me energy you know, it gives me happiness but for others it's like yeah I, I can't do that for just many like you know some people they put all their emotional output onto one person and like that's enough <laughs> more than that it's like okay now i'm getting kind of tired right so i see that there's some other people who have told me that too and so i hear you um has there ever been an issue where someone else that your wife has been seeing wanted her to be only with them or have any other issues ever arose uh not to my knowledge uh, she she also she's dated or she, <laughs> she's she's been with or she is with other another person who is also polyamorous so in that situation no <laughs> right right because the the polyam the per, other person who's polyamorous already has the the uh you know the expectation of oh i already know you're going with other per people because i'm the same way right <laughs> so that's cool um yeah i've never personally experienced that uh with when i was with her when i've been with her like somebody else is like look you need to leave him and come with me <laughs> i've not experienced that uh, that would suck do you think you are more introverted and your wife more extroverted? I think I'm like in the middle, right? They, I've been, I heard, I hear a term thrown out called ambivert. I think I'm an ambivert, right? Uh, I do like being with a lot of people, but I don't like being in the center of attention or like drawing attention toward me, right? But I do like the atmosphere of many people around me and interacting I do like being in, in the middle of that and that does give me energy right but like some you know I I, <laughs> my, I have like a cousin who's like this who he has to be like the center of attention <laughs> like he, he's like the, one of those type of people that he walks into like a room of 50 people and he's like everybody's got to know me right so he'll just talk to every single person in the damn room right? and that like you can see like that energizes him like other people that was just tired of fuck out of him but the more he interacts with people like the more energy he receives uh, i'm not like that but uh, i do feel like when i'm by myself for a long time my energy starts to deplete like i'm like you know i gotta go out i gotta go out i gotta um, and not like just go out to the park i gotta go to like a party or something i gotta go where like other people are at like a festival or something <laughs> right. uh, but i don't have to talk i could just like it kind of chill where people are around me so i would say like that's i'm an ambivert and then do you ever hang out with her other partners uh yeah I, i'm doing um a dungeons and dragons <laughs> I play Dungeons and Dragons, and I'm the dungeon master, the game, the, the game master, and I, I'm playing with one of her partners, uh, <laughs> uh, and he's cool. He's cool. You know, he's a cool guy. Uh, so yeah, and I, I definitely um, it's becoming more um, normalized for me, <laughs> for sure. What are your thoughts? Oh, hello, uh, Clark Bowler. What are your thoughts on neurodiversity? Also, do you have fresh critical theory book recommendations? 
Oh, uh, neurodiversity. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, um, what are my thoughts? Um, what do you mean, like, yeah, I think it's a thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done some videos. I can recommend you videos I've done on neurodiversity. Uh, what was it? I think it's called The Collected Schizophrenias, uh, which is a great book. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Um, check that book out. But I know many people. Yeah, so check out, you know, the, the collected schizophrenias. Um, I did. I made a video about that text. It's a great book. Um, it specifically talk about schizophrenia, which is, um, you know, a medical uh, health uh, mental disorder condition. Um, but you know, neurodiverge, di neurodiversity is like many, many things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I have many friends and many uh, people that I know who are neurodivergent. What does that mean? That can mean so many things. Like your your brain isn't like typical, but what the hell is typical? <laughs> right. I guess those are my thoughts. Right. Um, again, like when we talk about neurodivergent uh, neurodivergence and neurodiversity. We also have to talk about like are the society that we live in and how our society doesn't accept certain kinds of um, neural conditions <laughs> right I would say you know like um, if you talk about um, autism right autism which is another spectrum right and uh, you know we like it, our society treats autism like it's a uh, you know, more like it's a disease or a disorder, uh, but oftentimes it's more just like a a, a predisposition or like just a a, a a particular way the mind is mapped, right? And um, you know, it's more just our the problem really is our society isn't like accepting of that kind of way of uh, thinking or being, right? And so I would say, like, why don't we be, our society should be more accommodating to autistic people. <laughs> and then we, we talk about what's an autistic person is like, that's so many things, right? Because autism is this enormous spectrum, right? Uh, and you can say that about many other kinds of neurodivergent um, behaviors or neurodiversity, neurodiverse conditions, right? Uh, and again, so yeah, well, it's a fascinating thing to think about because really, yeah, I think you can't talk about neurodiversity without also talking about like our social, um, so uh, our societal conditions and the fact that we don't, we only accommodate certain kinds of ways of being reject other ways of being because you know I, i'll just keep going to the circling it right back to like it all has to do with the the worship of hyper capitalism patriarchy um, you know ableism <laughs> you know, that kind of heteronormativity uh, and if we just look outside of that we would like you know the, the way the brain works there are many different ways the brain works now you know a condition like schizophrenia that's actually debilitating condition right where you need to like actually get some medical help with that uh, so it, it really just depends um do i have right yeah yeah so any book critical theory book recommendations yeah the one i just said uh, the collected schizophrenias now nadia says do you ever still have those feelings come up being uncomfortable with her polyamory yeah it's the same way with um you know homophobia or um racism or uh, uh ableism or fat phobia or all the other things that we've been conditioned in our lives right <laughs> of course they gotta come out you know they, uh yeah wish i could just bust out with books 
I don't know where they're at or they are at on the shelves. Oh well. But there <laughs> but there's another book. Um I think it's called like I have it. Like it's called How to Be an Anti Racist or whatever. Uh that's the concept of uh anti racism is this concept that the idea is like we've been conditioned to be racist since the day we're born. So being racist is not like a, a moral thing. It's more just uh, you got to deprogram yourself, right? So even like even a black person can be racist, right? <laughs> or like any we're all because we live in a racist society, right? And it's the same thing with polyamory, or like if you extend that further to just heteronormativity, right? Or patriarchy, like uh, any relationship outside of a heteronormativity heteronormative like cis gendered um, traditional marriage we automatically program we just automatic response is that's not normal <laughs> right <laughs> so and we just have to fight that <laughs> so yeah i think i'll always struggle with uh with just like the, the polyamory and just just like i struggle with all these other conditioning uh, but i'm getting better at it <laughs> uh, what do you call that so anti-racist though anti heteronormativity <laughs> you know gotta work on my anti-heteronormativity I would say I requested this topic so it doesn't have to be for a while but would you consider doing a video on friendship sure yeah <laughs> I mean you certainly can I mean we can talk about friendship right now <laughs> if you want eventually I gotta do a, a video on but I have so many other books in front of this the book uh, Plato's I think it's Plato's uh, symposium, symposium right where he talks about yeah cause he talks about plutonic love right eventually I'll do a book on that I mean a video on that plutonic love right Uh, and that would be a great one to talk about friendship but yeah friendship is great too it's good to be friends <laughs> I always get frustrated with myself with how conditioned I am I try to work on it but it comes up here and there like what you're saying just got to keep fighting it yeah you know and I would encourage you if uh, but you might have already read these books um I gotta find it. <laughs> oh, it must be here. Let me look. Let me look right quick. Cause you probably, you bet you probably already read the book. Let me look just for a second. How to be an anti-racist. <laughs> I forgot the author's name. But you, I'm sure you might have heard of it. A very popular book. I'll do a video on that one one day too. <laughs> did my music stop? I think it did. Let's replay my music. Cool. Um, because I think that that book has a lot of insights on um, uh, combating conditioning, oppressive conditioning, and uh, always working at it. Um, that's kind of how I got the idea from <laughs> was that book. 
I didn't realize the term platonic relates to Plato. Yep. <laughs> That's where it comes from. Because <laughs> I guess he was the one that popularized the concept. It's like, look, um, friendship, you can love your friend. And, uh, you know, we put the love of a romantic person um, over the love of a friend. And then Plato's like, well, actually, it's the same value. <laughs> I mean, look it up. Damn, I can't believe I can't. It's somewhere on these shelves. That book, anti. Google Books. Oh, Wikipedia? Yeah, I guess so. I'll just do the Wikipedia page. Just do that? Yeah, that's fine. Put it in the chat. There you go. Yeah, that that um, link I put there is a book that talks about um, um, the concept of you know what racism really is, or like how racism is um, expressed <laughs> in our society. Right. I got into a lot of debates with the, about that book, so I, I definitely need to um, make a video about that. Yeah, the idea is, um, yeah, r <laughs> most racism isn't done with members of the KKK um, burning crosses in their backyards. Uh, or like, you know, blatantly racist people calling black people the N-word. Right? <laughs> That's not like, most racism isn't, isn't that. Most racism is microaggressions and um, unconscious things that just come based off of our pro our programming our um our biases and like our profiling and things like that um and so we have to be aware and so like it takes the morality out like oh you're a bad person because you're you're racist it's like well no that's it's not you're you're just programmed to be racist like we, we, we you know from the you know the, the the TV we see and uh, the stuff that we witness, we're programmed that way, um, and so you have to like get rid of the idea like I'm a bad person, I'm immoral, um, and instead you just have to be like, um, okay, I'm just gonna have to fight constantly to battle the programming. Right? Interestingly enough, it's very it's actually quite similar to the concept of original sin, which is a Christian thing. <laughs> Although, you know, lots of a lot of Christians don't really understand that concept. And, you know, it's been used to um in malicious ways. <laughs> but that you know, the concept is you know, uh, oh you're you're a sinner, you're just a sinner. You just because you're a human being, hu all human beings are just they're just sinful creatures. Right? So the the goal isn't like I gotta stop being a sinner because that's you're always gonna be a sinner. The goal is like constantly working on yourself uh, to like you know make yourself at the least amount of sin as possible. Right? It's kind of it really is the same kind of concept, but you know, um, unfortunately. Christians don't look at it. You know, most Christians they don't like take it in that direction. It's more like just trying to control people, which is sad. Um, and so you could do the same thing with uh, polyamory, right? <laughs> which is interesting. Where it's like, uh oh, these thoughts of jealousy. And so, right, thank you. I got this book, The Ethical Slut. And you know, you don't have to look at the debate. I have a, a lot a video that I did live with a debate. Uh, but it's like over three hours, so you don't have to look at all the th the whole three hour thing. <laughs> you just look at bits and pieces of it. <laughs> but um, it talks about jealousy. It's a huge, as a big chapter here, and I thought it was spot on. How like jealousy is actually um, it's a it's a thing that we we it's just a it's an emotion. And you can't control emotion. Emotions are, are defense mechanisms in our in evolutionary defense mechanisms. And jealousy is like an emotion. And it's just going to happen. 
right? Uh, but you, so you have to like learn to be aware, just like any emotion, like anger or something like that. When these feelings arise, you can't control the feeling arising, but you can control how you react to the feeling. Like you could be like, "Oh, I'm jealous," but why? Why am I jealous? Like, you know, for example, with the polyamorous, you know, somebody, uh, my wife is dating. <laughs> is going out with somebody else right um, and it's like and I'm jealous and it's like okay why Why am I jealous why um, well you know she's going with somebody else and um, that means she doesn't le- love me as much and it's like well that's not true like <laughs> that's actually not true right because <laughs> she's you know she says she's told me like that's not the case um, and, and so it's like okay then what is it Oh, I'm looking at this person, and they they actually look more attractive than I do. It's like, well, why do you feel that way, right? It's like, well, I feel that way because you know, I maybe I need to hit the gym, and it's like, yeah, but your life doesn't she doesn't care about that. <laughs> so you're 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 like you're checking yourself. <laughs> you're checking yourself, right? You're checking yourself. Uh, but the the very being jealous itself, like. The, the feeling of jealousy that comes out that that is not a, a, a moral failing that's just your natural reaction right? uh, but it's how you react later like how you respond to your your, your reaction is like when you take a step back and analyze like hmm, maybe I shouldn't maybe this is not as big of a thing as, a, as I'm making it out to be or maybe like this is not uh, you know this is not a situation where um, my wife is uh, not expressing is expressing less love for me. <laughs> like that's not what's happening here. <laughs> and then when you start thinking like that, it's like, oh, okay, then the jealousy will start going away. we will be like, okay, now I now that I've analyzed the situation, like, why do I feel this way again? <laughs> you know, it's like. So that's 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 cool, and the book talks about that. The ethical slut talks about that, which I think it's a great book. Uh, okay. Oh, and then okay, let me. Uh, I got a list here. Friendship. So let me um, compile this list. Uh, I have this list of, of live stream ideas that I put in my phone here. <laughs> uh, so we can get rid of marriage. Doing that now, and we could talk about friendship and elitism. Okay, cool. And then Nadia says, "So jealousy is connected to being insecure about yourself. It could be." Saw the book says and i would highly encourage you check this book out because the book says jealousy is not one thing and it's different things for different people right so for some people it is about being insecure but that's jealousy can command is a response to many things like it's like an umbrella term so for some for many people it's not about insecurity it's about like a trauma response it's like maybe something you're your parent didn't love you the way you think you should have been loved and now every time someone that you love feels like they're not loving you the way that you should feel loved you um you feel jealous right it's like a trauma you know because because you've been traumatized by the lack of love that your father exhibited to you right and it it, it, and it could be many, many reasons, right? So it's not it's not so much what it is. It, it's the response. It's the response. But So when you feel, have this emotion of jealousy, which is, you know, um, it's looking at somebody and seeing them with something else and you feel like, I should have that too, <laughs> right? And you feel kind of like, this you know bitter negativity about that uh you gotta you gotta like take a step back and be like well why why do i feel this way and it could be it could it could be insecurity it could be fear 
that could be another thing it's like i'm afraid to be alone <laughs> yeah or it could be like uh um i mean it could be so many things but you ha you have to do the work internally yourself right to figure out what is the reason <laughs> and the book talks about that so that's another cool insight about this book is like what causes jealousy well it could be many things <laughs> you have to really but you have to do the work to think of to examine what those things are and it's all about you <laughs> right right yeah that's another thing the inside of the book it's like jealousy is not about the other person it's not about the the one you're jealous of that's causing it it's about something that's happening inside you right <laughs> which is kind of genius when you think about it because then you, if you think like in on if you take it that way then it's like then you can control jealousy because it really is all about you so it's like okay i can keep it in check <laughs> uh, which does wonders for like relationships <laughs> uh, and then so many people in our culture get angry about the concept of polyamory yeah and again it's because patriarchy <laughs> it's that programming it's like um you should only be with one person I've had people that tell me like I I think you know I think polyamory is immoral. <laughs> why? <laughs> well, I think it's immoral. You know, I, I mean there's many reasons why people will say that. But one of the big reasons is because well, you need to be committed to one person. Why? <laughs> well, by being committed to one person, that means that you truly love that person. So, my love for somebody is dependent on how exclusive I share my love with that person is 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 dependent on exclusivity like so love is about exclusivity exclusivity right and like that doesn't make any sense <laughs> like or does it no, i don't think so you know um, but you can go further and talk you know if you if you really really want to understand the truth behind the matter it's that we treat people like property which is which you know when you really think about why we're offended by polyamory is because we treat people like property which is fucked up when you really it's, it's sick it's disgusting actually when you really think about it it's like i own your intimacy like your intimacy belongs to me and it's like so that's what love is love is ownership of your intimacy like your intimacy is my property like that's what love is that's sick right and then we wonder like why uh you know divorce is so high or like why relationship because it's based off of like ownership <laughs> it's not really based like love is not ownership these are two different things <laughs> like you should you know if you really love somebody you should you, you would want them to be happy you want them to be happy right and if they find happiness with somebody else uh, that should be great for you should feel great about it because they're happy um and then you have to get to the whole hurdle of like, well, why don't they, or, or maybe it's, it could be a fear, right? It's like, well, if they're, they find happiness with somebody else, then they're not going to, they're not going to be happy with me anymore. And it's like, well, actually it doesn't work like that. Right? <laughs> like we've only, it only works like that because we've created this paradigm in our society has created this paradigm in our heads to think that way. Right? Like you can only experience happiness romantic happiness with one person like who said that right well you know society says that but is society right no <laughs> right you can find happiness with multiple people like you somebody can intimately be intimate with somebody and then be intimate with somebody else and their intimacy with that other person does not in any way take the intimacy that they have with the other person right uh that's fine like you know but we create these fictions in our head where it's like well that's not the case it's like well so that's that's why i value philosophy right because philosophy you take it a step back in your air like well why do i think these things like are all these are these things really true <laughs> like these truths that i have in my head do they really make sense and that's like that's the a philosophical exploration right which i don't know that's why I always say like philosophy is the key to like ending oppression and discrimination because <laughs> it's really like why do we have these ideas in our heads that are just basically keeping us in these 
uh, prisons of our own device. <laughs> and then, um, where was I? Humans are easily threatened by people we perceive as better. Yeah, and I would say, like, again, that's like, that's programming. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know, a lot of times we we have these ideas like, well, that's natural, you know. Humans are just naturally this, naturally that, and it's like, well, is it the case, or do we live in a society where that has been programmed into us? <laughs> like, first of all, we gotta like, we gotta like, what is the understanding of better? <laughs> right. Better how? Better in what way? <laughs> right. And and then you guys, I just like, why do we perceive these? And like, and, and then you start figuring that out. It's like, okay, why, where do I get this concept of better from? Like, where does this idea of better originate? <laughs> you know, because we can, people, a person can be better in, in many different ways. I mean, it just depends. And then Jeremy says, jealousy comes from a feeling of losing control. I think. Um. Yeah, it could, it could, it could, it. But it also could be other things as well. Um, I have a friend who said he would be okay with being polyamorous, but that their partner's female. Okay, he is not comfortable with them being polyamorous. I told him that was yeah, that is sexist. <laughs> and um, so that was the thing with me, and that was like a program. I mean, all types of shit happens in the mind. But sometimes people don't want to be called out because, you know, just, it, the thing is, like, you've been programmed this way, right? So my, if my wife would go out with uh, uh, go out with a woman, she's also bisexual or I guess now she are pansexual. I think she prefers uh, that term now. Uh, so she will go out with women and it'll be like, OK, that's not as bad. But then she'd go out with men and I'd feel weird. Right? Why? <laughs> Why? Because I'm, I'm threatened by men. Because that's the whole patriarchy. Because, so now I'm taking a step back. It's like, well, what's the difference? There is no difference. Right? So why do I feel weird? The reason why I feel weird is because this patriarchal programming. Okay. I think I, uh, I, uh, exited out. Got my, uh, Internet went out for a little bit. I think we're back. <laughs> I think we're back. I think we're good. Uh, and then once I realized that, like, okay, now the jealousy starts kind of like deflating like a balloon. <laughs> and that's the same way, like. But yeah, I would say that is sexist or, um, and you know, I would, um, you know, I wonder what your friend's response to that would be. I don't know. I think because of our, our territorial animalistic nature, we see relationships as possessions. Are we are are human beings territorial and animalistic? <laughs> I I don't even think that's the case. Like, are human beings territorial? I think we've been conditioned to be territorial. Excuse me, <laughs> I mute. I muted my mic. <laughs> yeah, I think we because you know property, and uh, you know our capitalistic society and property being like a major thing that people are uh, you know uh, forced to um, are drawn to to acquire. But you know, you talk to like a communist <laughs> or people who are like into communes, <laughs> which I know a lot of people who are into those. <laughs> and they're like, we should share everything and mutual aid. And uh, there's lots of people I know who are not like they reject the whole territorial like concept. Uh, so I, don't know, I think that's conditioning too. People are afraid of letting someone be free and experiment with other people. Mm hmm. I think that is the case. People are afraid, but I think they're they are afraid because of our patriarchal conditioning. And I'll keep beating that beating that dead horse because <laughs> it's not dead. The horse is very much 
uh, rearing up. Uh, and you know, yeah, as you know, Black Ponder, we're, we're, we're we push the feminist angle. I do like to say, like, well, why? People are afraid of letting someone be free and experiment with other people. Why? Why? <laughs> because this is this damn patriarchy. That's why. And I think because people are conditioned to be loyal, loyal to invest, invest in romantic partner, it causes people to become enraged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Invest as if they're like property, right? Uh, <laughs> it's sad, but it's kind of it's, it's absurd. It's so absurd you, can, you have to laugh at it. Like in a relationship is an investment. You know, I'm putting, I've I put so much into to you. You know, I've given up my, <laughs> because you know people will frame it like, you know, I could go out with any. You know, I I was dating all these these people, and then I decided to just stay with you. So I, you are my investment. I could have been dating other people, but I decided to do you. So you owe me. <laughs> you know, people think like this. It's like, dude, your your part your love partner isn't real estate, <laughs> right? 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 Like, wait, well, how did this happen? But we know how it happened. Right? We know how it happened. Right? We are taught to see relationships as investments as much as possession. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the very first marriages was about, because, you know, uh, women were considered property. Um, and, you know, when marriages were first constructed in the human society, right, it was about, like, property exchange. Um, you know, if you look at the history of marriage um, and you go to early civil, human civilizations, it was very, it had very little to do with love. <laughs> right? And it had mostly to do with like managing property, um, and it you know it wasn't you know, it, well it was about like women were seen as property, but more so it was about like dowries and um, you know land exchange and like estates being you know it was it was actually about property <laughs> like real property too, and and so it's funny that, and then we're surprised when. Uh, because you know that that whole conception has is is still carried forth today you know so we treat each other as property <laughs> and then um and that's why <laughs> you know and that's why it's kind of like with the whole my police abolition angle right? abolish police you know the very first police you know the police were created in the united states of america to manage slaves, right? to catch and manage slaves, you know, they were the they were uh, used to um, manage the property of rich people, right? And you know that was the South, the American South, and the American North. Police were the the first use of police were to bust unions. They're union busters, right? and so you fast forward to police today and then you see uh, people of color particularly black people disproportionately affected targeted by cops and we wonder like why is why what's going on well it, there's this through lie like because police there they were they were founded to that's what they did <laughs> they uh, you know uh, captured people of color particularly black people and they enslaved to, to be slaves and you know our current criminal justice system is basically you know pretty much enslavement right they you know prisoners work um you know for little or no money no wage right uh for many for companies right it's the same shit and then we wonder like why is this happening? Because, like, <laughs> that's what police officers always were. <laughs> like, that, that's, that's what they are. Like, so the system is just, like, continuing. Right? And the same thing with marriage. It's like, why do we treat each other like property? Because that was, that's how marriage started in the first place. Right? <laughs> and so we have this fantasy of, like, oh, no, it's about romance. It's like, well, that's not how it started. And when, and when marriage was first started, they were very clear. 
right there was no confusion about it it's like well, this isn't about love this is about we're just trying to manage our estate here and part of the estate is this woman will be with you and only you <laughs> it was like a you know, it was a deal it, it, so you know things like we see it so that's why it's very important to look at the social dynamics of a situation right of anything um because the social like economic dynamics of any situation plays a huge part in why things are happening <laughs> right and then Nadia says I haven't finished your video on the anarcho feminism but I remember you said something about the differentiation about nature and nurture and how there are really there really shouldn't be a difference a differentiation Yep, that's true. How come some people are dedicated to enlightening themselves and some people get enraged by these ideas? Okay, so there was multiple things there. Um, yeah, the book talks about there is no difference between nature and nurture. Um, uh, yeah, so if we take it to this conver conversation um, with uh, the conditioning of marriage like we we think marriage is about romance <laughs> and like uh romance reaching its epitome and then that becomes our nature but why is that <laughs> why do we think that is because the nurture <laughs> like societal conditioning the nurture and then that nurture becomes our nature it's a dialectical thing going on <laughs> as hegel would say like it's this dialectical like circular reinforcement of nature nurture nature, nurture where it becomes so much of a cycle it's just like one thing now <laughs> right so that's true and then how come some people are dedicated to aligning themselves and some people get enraged by these ideas it's because you know um people don't want to self-examine themselves and you know people's egos at another thing that we say here at the black ponder is that your ideas are not your identity right <laughs> like we're saying like we have we're born with these racist ideas that doesn't mean you're a racist right? <laughs> that just means you have to you have to constantly work at removing your racism like just because you have racist ideas that's automatically make you a racist right? <laughs> but you're a human being with racist ideas <laughs> right uh but you're still human so it, it, but the problem is we don't separate the two they're like oh you, you you know you're saying i have this you're saying i did this thing that's racist but i'm not a racist i'm not a racist how dare you call it like we're not saying that but we are saying you you did something that is racist <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's kind of like this ego separation that we have to do this, this kind of like self-examination which is hard because you realize like wow I really did some fucked up shit um, and I need to work on it but the idea is like well I did all this fucked up shit that means I'm a fucked up person no <laughs> it doesn't mean you're a fucked up person that means you just need to work on yourself because we're all fucked up people you know some people more than others but, <laughs> but it's all about the work we put into ourselves and um, you know it's so uh, you know it's about separating the ego. Uh, we men surely treated women so badly throughout history. We sure in hell did. <laughs> you know, you know, and if anybody doesn't believe that, I would encourage you to read the Bible. <laughs> the Bible. <laughs> the Bible is a perfect example of men treating women badly. <laughs> and a lot of people don't want to confront that, but it's it's true. Uh, so you know but it's does does that mean all men are bad no it just means it's time for us to step up to the plate and stop and realize like wow we've been pretty fucked up over the history we need to like change that <laughs> we just need to change did you enjoy the book you won and oh yeah my little library and I'm reading other book oh, okay cool uh, I forgot that was you that won the book. I made him. Um, but I'm glad you had the book. I thought I had another copy of that book. But I actually didn't. <laughs> I was like. 
wait a minute, where the happened to my book? I was like, oh, I think I gave him my only copy. <laughs> but it's fine, I could just get another one. <laughs> so hopefully you uh, like the book. The Hume, I think it was like on natural religions or something like that. Basically, I, I have other Hume books that I have not read. But like Jeremy is saying, I also have so many books that are in front of my library. I feel, yeah, I should feel bad, but I kind of do, but not so bad. <laughs> There's, people are actually starting to send me books, which is great. And I'm like, oh, I read it, but I haven't read them yet. <laughs> but I'm always like, well, you know, and now, you know, and other things like sometimes people will send me PDFs and I'm like, Okay, that's great, thanks. But it's like, I'll just put this on the list. Uh, I'm not gonna be in a rush now. If you were to send me like a hard copy of the book, maybe I would be more inclined to read it. <laughs> or, uh, you know, or if you paid me, you know, I became a sponsor. Like, then I, I probably, I would definitely read it at that point. Right? <laughs> so I don't feel too bad. Oops. There's this comment here, but I can't read it because there is a heart icon in the way. I think you're asking. Um, yeah, sorry, is this icon here? Emoji. How, before we end, how's life going, Neil? I think that's what you asked. Um, it's going good. Uh, <laughs> we actually, me and my wife were about to. Uh, move into our first home and this home I'm I'm renting this place right now like many people rent the place they live in but finally we're gonna buy a house and we're gonna start moving in next week so I'll be a, a homeowner so I'm gonna be like a, joining the capitalist re regime <laughs> um, uh, but yeah that'll be good It'll be good. It'll be great. Um, I'm just, I was just playing about the whole capitalist regime. It'll be, it'll be great. Yeah, so that's going to be exciting. We're going to be, uh, you know, get a home. Um, it's come to the point where it's like um, having a mortgage will cost exact pretty much the same as just renting, um, paying rent. So I'm like, well, I might as well just purchase, a, you know, get start doing that. You know, home ownership is the, 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 the most or what well, the primary way of creating intergenerational wealth <laughs> so i better be beyond that mm -hmm. and then you ask i didn't realize you had your address open to the public to send books where do you list it? i don't have my address open to the public but if you email me um I, I'll, I'll give you an address to send <laughs> you know? i'll certainly give you a mailing address for sure but i don't have it open to the public but uh, uh, you can't send me books. I will give you a mail if you uh, send me an email or whatever. Uh, and then you ask, how's your new house? It's great now. We Yeah, we still got to move in. Um, we still got to, like, sign the final papers. Uh, but it's, it's cool. Yeah, I think it'll be pretty nice. And, um, we, I got plans to uh, do some cool stuff with it uh, some activist work uh, home ownership will enable me to con further my activist work so that'll be nice that'll be nice mm -hmm. so yeah i think we're gonna make this house pretty pretty um cozy and um you know um, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice <laughs> so, then i won't have to worry about all that i mean there'll be other things to worry about as as a homeowner but you know, having a landlord and all that bullshit. You know, I'm, I'm kind of done with that life. <laughs> Fortunately, I have the option to be done with it. Because so many people don't. But I'm taking advantage. So, I guess that's that about wraps up this stream. Uh, um, but I'll ask answer any other questions or address any other comments anybody has. Will you have other kids... Do you think? Um, yeah, we might adopt again. 
yeah, if the opportunity and the person, you know, if if some, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, you never know. We could adopt again. Sure. Who knows? Mm hmm. Um, okay. So, yeah, I'll just leave you with, uh, I'll conclude by saying, um, yeah, it is a shame, you know, to wrap up the marriage um, discussion. It is a shame that um, we equate marriage with ownership. <laughs> but you say, but not biological? No. No. <laughs> not biological. All right. We both have no interest in cre bringing new humans into this world <laughs> you know but there's so many humans that are already in this so many kids you know particularly teenagers that are in the adoption uh or the foster care system who need who need parents you know there's so many kids and so there's your there's your pool of needy kids in need right there um but yeah i just we've decided like no <laughs> we're not really into the whole that that's another fantasy some people you know i have friends that are like you know it's just something about having biological you know you just have somebody that looks like you who's like shares your blood and again that's just like where do these ideas come from <laughs> some people will say like oh you know they're natural i guess i mean you know there is a natural inclination to breed that's that's true i mean even viruses do that but i don't know i never i never i don't have it <laughs> i i don't have that natural so i either there's something wrong with me or you know there's something else going on <laughs> like i never like oh i gotta i gotta spread my seed like i don't i never had that desire within me so i don't know <laughs> uh but yeah it's a shame that um we live in a society where um, love is equated to ownership where uh you know uh, and you know i would i would i would think thoroughly if you're a type of person that you know if you want to get married if you're like yeah I, can't, I just i love to get i would love to get married that's that's great that's cool uh marriages can be beautiful but I, you know, if you have these ideas of, yeah, I just, I feel like one, you know, one person, I, I want one person to be committed to me fully and wholly. And that person can't be with anybody else. And if there was somebody else, then I, I don't feel is good. Um, I would highly, if you feel that way, I would like deeply examine the reasons why you feel that way. <laughs> I would deeply about I'm not saying you're wrong, but I am saying well I'll, you know <laughs> I kinda am saying you're wrong. All I'd say like deeply examine like why do you feel that the by, the love you have somebody somebody that loves you is strong if they are only being intimate with you and why do you have to own that intimacy like in what way is that love like in what way is that love um yeah it, it just really think about that it's it just examine like where is this coming from because <laughs> I, I you know i don't think that should you know i think that's a kind of toxic thing when you really when you have that kind of feeling when you're like i own your intimacy that is is that healthy is that is that really love right i don't think it is <laughs> i don't think it, um i think that is a kind of like uh possession of that is like is you know love shouldn't be possession <laughs> love shouldn't be like i got you i got you and now i your own your mind and mine alone is like that's not healthy that's not how we think that that's happy we even like you know there's that whole that song i belong to you you belong to me i belong to you you belong that's when you really think about it that's kind of it's kind of disgusting it's kind of gross <laughs> uh it's like slight is you know i don't know 
we need to really re-examine these ideas that we have in our head these fundamental principles that we get from our society and be like yeah is that correct but anyway so i would deeply encourage you to think like that to uh question your fundamental um core principles you know and you might be like yeah i still feel you know then that's that's cool at least you you really thought it through but think it through well i would like to thank you for watching the show and uh tune in next time you know viewers requests do go at the top they do go at the top so if you got a request um certainly bring it up and you know they'll probably be at the top because we got two already that would be cool uh, but until next week I'm, I'm hopefully well we'll see if we'll be streaming next week because next week i'll be moving <laughs> i'll be moving so but we'll see i may or may not and then um thanks so much for doing my request yeah, no problem, man. We will do your other requests on friendship. That will be cool. Uh, and then, Jeremy, I think you're the one that asked to do one on elitism. Sure, that will be the next one. That was an introspective live. Yeah. And then Clark Bowler says, thank you. Thank you for watching. And tune in next time for more Philosophical Thought.